question today is entitled Faith of the Centurion. It is found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11. This is a Sunday school lesson for April the 14th, 2024. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the seventh verse of the text, and it reads as follows. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my centurion, my, my servant will be healed. Again, faith of the centurion is our subject. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to identify the reason for Jesus' amazement and explain the role of the town of Capernaum uh, in Jesus' ministry and brainstorm ways to exhibit faith as and analogous, analogous to the faith of the centurion. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. If you give me any value at all, please like my lessons, please share my lessons. And leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just grateful that you've caused your people to assemble once again surrounding your word today to understand better about our faith. Right now, Lord, we ask if you would forgive us of our sins, wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. We surrender. I will to you at this moment, Lord, use us all as your humble servants. Lord, send us the true teacher, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, to, to guide and direct our path, Lord, your spirit. We thank you for all you've done, you're doing in our life. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and ask always. Amen. So this gospel according to Luke. This uh, author, Luke, was born in Antioch. And he, won, he was one of the earliest converts to Christianity. So Dr. Luke was a well-educated man in classical Greek and noted for his literary talent. And he wrote this gospel and the sequel, The Acts of the Apostles, which followed the Gospel of John. And together, these two works cover 60 years of the life and teaching of Jesus and the early Christian church. And Luke is unique in that he was the only Gentile to compose a New Testament book. And Luke was a physician, again, Dr. Luke was his name, and uh, the likely companion to Paul on three uh, or four of his missionary journeys. Amen? Let's move on. So this slide provides you a summary of, of a chapter of, of, of this uh, gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> and I don't want to bore you too much about and go through all of these, but again, you know that we have this thing in chapter five where Jesus was teaching from the boat at Genesaret and then that, that great hall of fish and, and the lepers and, and, and all that, you know, we know that. And then, and here we're in chapter six, uh, uh, right before we here arrive in chapter seven, <clears throat> that, that, that the, the, fair, the, the, the disciples were, were, were plucking corn on the Sabbath and then, uh, Jesus had, uh, some interaction with those uh, those religious leaders about this, and Jesus said that the Son of Man is a Lord of the of the Sabbath. That that that, that he has uh, that 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 Jesus has uh, the, um, the uh, control over the Sabbath, and, and again Jesus prays all night before he would choose his apostles. Let's talk about those apostles next. Amen. So Jesus would choose the apostles of Simon Peter and, and Andrew and James and John and Philip and Thomas and, and Matthew and Thaddeus and James and Simon and Judas Iscariot, you know, the one who would be the deceiver. And Bartholomew, uh, these are those 12 that Jesus would ultimately choose to be his disciples. Amen. And already Jesus is starting to, to get people following him because of these many healings and, 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 and miracles and the teachings. And, and here in chapter 6, Jesus is speaking to the, the crowd and the scribes and the Pharisees and his disciples as well. That's again what we're leading up to where we are here in chapter 7. The crowds are following him all the way from chapter 5 here to chapter 
6 and ultimately chapter 7 as well. Amen. And, and continuing in chapter 6, <clears throat> that's where we get the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are the Sermon on the Plain that Jesus teaches to this crowd about how to enter the kingdom of God. And again, he gives us a different point of view and he speaks to the poor and has these social issues. And he says, blessed are the humble before God and be more blessed. And he talks about the woes to the rich and to the fool and those who laugh and those who, who speak well and about loving your enemies and, and don't retaliate. He's giving everybody a different point of view about how to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. I have two phrases I want to magnify from this blessed and the, and the well as well. Amen. So the blessed is to, to be made holy or consecrated, endowed with divine favor and protection, bringing pleasure or relief as a welcome contrast to what one has previously experienced. Our blessed is the uh, describes a believer be, as beginning to be an in the position of receiving God's blessings as well. It's just being in that position to receive God's rest and we are blessed. We are the blessed. Amen. And this word woe <clears throat> is often used uh, re, uh, uh, to express grief or regret or misfortune or something that's grievous or distressed state uh, from such a great affliction of some sort. Or, or being in such trouble uh, that a, a, an escape is out of what seems impossible. It's like you see your car about to have an accident. You say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Again, that's this word, whoa, and sometimes whoa. It's almost beyond description and words. And whoa may be the only thing that one can say when we when we, when we we express in our feelings or groan. It's a whoa, 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 whoa. That's this whole word of whoa in our lesson next slide and there are strange woes that that are here in the in the text in, in chapter six and he says woe unto you who are rich for you have received your consolation woe unto you who are full for you shall hunger and woe unto you who laugh now for you shall mourn and weep and woe unto you when all men speak well of you for you so did your fathers to those false prophets. Jesus is giving us a different point of view here in chapter six to giving us the, the mindset of God. And that's what we're trying to find here in these Beatitudes, again, leading up to our lesson and magnify this point here. And it's part of that I share with you leading up to this as well. That, that and each of those that are just sharing those those comps of our paradoxical sayings that Jesus contrasts the current expectations of the kingdom with the spiritual reality of his kingdom, that we have a different point of view, that our God, our ways are not God's ways. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus mocked the world's values. He exalted what the world despises and rejected what the world admires. That that just because you're rich don't mean that you're you're all that. Again, he's trying to get people to, to understand that Jesus turns stuff upside down rather than right side up. And, and there are our perspective of the kingdom of God is so much different. And he wants us to understand that. And that's what we learn here in chapter six, again, leading up to our lesson. And Jesus' neat messages to the people is a plan, a new plan, a plan of love. Even love your enemies. Jesus turns stuff upside down, the right, the right side up, and our perspective of the perception of the kingdom of God is different. That's what he wants us to understand here in chapter six. Amen. The get, way we get into the kingdom of God is not from our point of view, it's from God's point of view. That our view is upside down to God's point of view. One more point of magnification. That there is a similar paradigm shift. And maybe I'm beating a dead horse. I'm giving you a lot, but I want you to understand what's here in chapter six that he's saying is a paradigm change that, that don't look at how you 
get into uh, the kingdom of God. It's, it's a new paradigm. It's a way to rethinking. It's a different idea. It's kind of drastic what he's saying. That is that is different. It's a, it's it's unique. It's it's dissimilar to what we think. How we can get close to God. Like I said, some people think they get close to God because I'm gonna give something and God gonna give me something back. I'm God gonna owe me or this and that. It's rethinking our understanding of who God is. One more cell of magnification, and then we will get into our lesson. Amen. That Jesus acknowledged that this is difficult request for us. That that that's something foreign to our way of thinking here in chapter six and in this message. And he, and he says here that if you love your, if you love your haters, that's again is. Is, is antithetical to our understanding that don't make fit in our brain well if you pray uh, that if you pray uh, do good deeds for those who use who are your users that's what he wants us to do he really wants us to do that if we surrender or acquiesce to the abusers or our bullies and don't just retaliate and if we don't just retaliate against the robbers or the takers and if you treat those who seek to do you wrong and you love them, give them some love and kindness, or are or, or, or you purposely in mind not to repay evil for evil, and if you're compassionate with folks who are just evil towards you, hard things for us to do. <clears throat> but Jesus says, if you do this, then the reward from heaven will be very great. And you will truly be acting as children of the Most High God. And so I share with you that shift the paradigm change that that upside down can understanding of, of of loving your enemies that's what he wants us to do then almighty god has a significant reward for you when you enter into the kingdom of heaven that's what that that, that dr luke was, was was sharing with us the words from jesus in chapter six again leading up to our lesson here in chapter seven amen so that's our background of almost 14 minutes of the background. Let's move on to this lesson text. Amen. In our lesson today in the Bible represents a beautiful narrative that touches upon faith and compassion and doubt and forgiveness. And here in chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, it demonstrates the faith of a centurion. That's what we'll be studying. And the setting of our lesson here in Capernaum, a Roman centurion demonstrates remarkable faith, uh, faith in Jesus' healing power. That's what we'll study along our journey today. Amen. The faith of the centurion is our subject. And uh, again, we're here in the gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, using NIV as our backdrop. And we began here in verse, uh, in verse um, 1 of the text. And again, when Jesus had finished saying all of this, and that's all of why I give you some measure of the uh, what happened in, ch in chapter 6 to give you some uh, because it says that after he had just finished saying all of this so what is all of this so that's I give you that background to the people who are listening and he entered Capernaum and, and again I share with you this map and last week we were had this discussion when he was with the fish the, the fishermen and all that was in Genesaret and as I told you about the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee, or sometimes it's called the Sea of Genesaret. Genesaret is a town just like Capernaum, the northern part of this, this Galilean region. And, and now he would, last week was in Genesaret, and now he's in Capernaum is where our, our lesson today will take place. 
as Jesus would have this interaction with the centurion and other believers as well. Amen. So Sunday school lesson, faith of the centurion is where we are here in verses two and three. And, and there a centurion servant whom his master valued highly. He was sick and about to die in verse three. And the centurion heard Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him and asking him to come and heal his servant. And I share with you setting kind of someone a large crowd of his disciples were there and a great number of the people. This is chapter six, just to give you some perspective, just some color to these verses two and three. That a large crowd of disciples were there and a great number of people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon and, and who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and, 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 and those troubled by uh, impure spirits were, were, were cured and the people all tried to touch Jesus in this what's happening here at this moment. And, and because power was coming from him and he and and healing them all that Jesus healed them all he didn't heal just some of them he healed them all and power was emanating from Jesus and and just like that woman with the issue of blood that that she felt the power emanating from Jesus she said I just need to touch the hem of his garment then that would be sufficient for my my healing and then again that that this is what was happening at this moment that the crowds were all around Jesus here in Capernaum. And this centurion is watching the events. He was a Roman soldier and he's watching what was going on. And, and, and again, at this moment that he, that he had been aware of, of what was happening and then he would hear and would send some elders of the Jews asking Jesus to come and heal his servant. Again, a Roman soldier. Next slide. The spirit, the centurion, uh, no doubt, it saw Jesus' miraculous healing and healing and healing everyone. That's what a point that I was trying to make in the prior that he healing everyone, not partially. Not that's like I share with you when we pray for a healing. We don't pray that God take a little bit of the cancer away. We want it all gone, right? And that's what's happening that those were coming before Jesus to large crowds and, and he was healing everyone. And this centurion no doubt saw the power of God at work and he had a need also. And there he would reach out to the elders and ask that Jesus would come provide some relief from a, a servant that he had under his own household. Next one. The faith of the centurion again we're in, in verses four uh, through six and when they came to jesus again those elders they pleaded earnestly with jesus and again that there there's a reason why that these these elders that that, that again that that the centurion no doubt had some kind of a relationship with these elders and thus that's why they they would be pleading earnestly with jesus in order to hear the request from this Roman soldier, this Roman leader, this man deserves to have you do this, is what these these elders were saying. That they they saying Jesus, he he deserves it. And verse five, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So so so. So Jesus went with them to meet this Roman soldier, this Roman officer of the military. Let's move on. Give some magnification on the next slide. Amen. The Roman centurion who could induce the elders of a Jewish village to approach Jesus on his behalf must have been a remarkable person. The garrison which held down the turbulent people 
had not usually are not usually likely to be much loved by them because the Romans were hard, uh, somewhat hard taskmasters against the people. But this man, about whom the the incident which is in our text are connected is related, was obviously one of the people whom that 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 uh, restless age had many who had uh, found out that his creed was outworn and that he had been drawn into Judaism by the lofty monotheism and the astute morality that he, again, that he had been looking at, 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 the, at, at uh, the Jewish faith and, and, and somehow he had found some connection to it. And he had gone so far as to build a t synagogue for these people, thereby, no doubt, it incurred the ridicule of his companions, probably no doubt, because what are you doing? You're Roman, you're, you're, you're not a Jew, but you're, you're, you're following after these, the God of the, this Jewish people. And perhaps the suspiciousness of his superiors, but <clears throat> that's the commentary I found that kind of magnifies this point so I put some color on this point that he had found a, a, a connection to the God of the Hebrew people. Let's move on. Verse six and seven of our text, and he was uh, not far from the house. Again, Jesus was not far from the house approaching this Syrian and centurion and, and when the centurion has sent his friends to say to Jesus on the way that he that Jesus was making his way to the centurion's house and he said the Lord don't 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 trouble yourself for I again do not deserve to have you come under my roof again he's, he recognized the, the majesticness of this Jesus Again, he is this king of the Jews. He is this Messiah. He is this miracle worker. He is this Emmanuel, God with us. And and, and again, there's some aspects of, the, of this that this centurion knows that the power of God is on this one Jesus in verse seven, our, our, um, our, our, our major text. And that is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you again as he's speaking to Jesus, but say the word. That, that again, say the word and, and my servant will be healed. That's the power. That's what he recognized. He had seen the power of Jesus. He had seen Jesus healing everyone. So Jesus, you don't have to come under my house. Just say the word from a distance and I believe that my servant will be healed. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Next one. Verse 8 of the text. For I, again, the centurion was having an interaction with Jesus, and he would, he would say to Jesus, For I, myself, am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I tell one, go, and he goes. And one come and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this. And he does it again. He's trying to have this, uh, this dialogue with Jesus and, 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 and his rationale why he believes that, that, that Jesus, you don't have to come under my house. That, that yeah, I believe you have authority uh, over the environment, over, over the elements of, of, of life. Uh, I believe that you have the power over this earth, over humanity, over over the demons, over over uh, over death and dying and 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 all, Lord, I believe that you have the power that 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 you can do it just like I command my people to do this and that. That you command the environment as well. Let me magnify a point in the next slide. Amen. Again, this is kind of, I took it the, the message Bible, the same text and kind of tweak it a little bit. And, and he says to Jesus, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a good man. I'm not a good person. 
And you know, I'm a, I'm a Roman officer, and I'd be embarrassed for you to come to my house, even embarrassed to come to you in person, you know. Yeah, because uh, you know, I guess people would think that he's a Jew, Jewish lover. He's a believer in that Hebrew God, and and and, and he didn't want the scrutiny that would probably come with with folks who were were giving him some measure of embarrassment or 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 some measure of scrutiny. But he but he says he says but he says because of that he says Jesus just give the order, just give the order, just like I know I can command others, but just Lord just give the order. And my servant will get well. This Roman centurion has incredible faith. I'm a man under orders. And so I also give orders. And I tell one soldier, go. And he goes. And another, come. And he comes. And my slave, do this. And he does it. But, 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 he has seen Jesus' power. And he knows his request to Jesus is even possible for me that's the miraculousness of this 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 request that that he even believes that 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 jesus has the power to to remotely suggest that even this is possible let's magnify this one more time amen jesus power is unlimited and in chapter six it says that, that he healed everyone no one was left unhealed, even the dead. He raised the dead. And, and now Jesus proves his presence does not even have to be in the same proximity. He can heal remotely. That is the power of the Son of God, our Redeemer, our Savior, that prophesied one, the very word of God that will be made flesh the, the very word of God that will tabernacle with humanity for 33 and a half years. That is, he has that unlimited power. The Messiah, the Son of God, he has the power. And he doesn't have to even be in the same vicinity. He can heal remotely. That's what we're learning today. And this centurion was aware and he made his request known. And Jesus would ultimately fulfill that request. Next one. In verse 9 of our text, and Jesus heard this. And Jesus was amazed at this centurion. And turning to the crowd, following him and said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in all of Israel. And none of y'all got this kind of faith. That's just, this is faith. This is real, real faith. That's what Jesus was saying to those who are following him, that this is real faith. Next slide. And then verse 10 and 11, the last two verses of our printed text. And, and, and then the men who had been who had sent returned to the house and found the servant well. And then again, that, that, that Jesus had said the word. Jesus spoke in, 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 into the atmosphere and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the healing power went forth and, and it, it transferred through time and space and, and reached this, this, this servant in the house, in the, in the right house of the, of the right centurion and, and, and would find the right one and he would he would change his condition they found that servant well in verse 11 and soon afterwards jesus went to a town called name the disciples in large uh, large crowds went along with him this ends our printed text i think i have three or four cells to close out this lesson for you. Amen. Large crowds continue to follow Jesus. <clears throat> I shared with you last week, the crowds were following him when he went to the, the boat. <clears throat> the crowds he had picked as 12 and, <clears throat> and the crowds were still following him and he had done the, the healing and, and healed the four 
and he and he fed the four thousand and five thousand. He did all these amazing, phenomenal things, and and again that 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 they they were following Jesus everywhere, and he was healing people everywhere, and and people had needs, and he was answering the needs for for every one of these folks. Everyone. I have a question. Do the crowds continue to follow Jesus because of their faith, like the faith of this centurion, or or or, or because they wanted stuff? And 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 and, and in the, the the narrative, not this one, but but oh, Jesus would ultimately mention that many of the folks that are following him, and even in our day today, that, that people think that I'm gonna I'm gonna give some money because I'm gonna get something back, right? That people think that Jesus is transactional. That if, that if we give this, he going to hear me and he going to give me this. He owe me this. That Jesus owes us for this or for that. And these folks believe that they're following after Jesus. And, and again, that, that that he's giving stuff away. So I got to get in line to make sure I get my freebie. But, the, but that that was not the condition of this of this centurion that he saw beyond the actual. And he saw the, the power and he saw the potential. Two more slides, I think, to close out this lesson. And I asked the time, and I, I, I want to share with you that 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 uh, that there are, are many kinds of faith. I'm just going to share with you what this is six different kinds. There's great faith that we find in Matthew, or there's little faith, you know, and you know people have little faith, and even the mustard seed faith that Jesus says is sufficient in order to be able to move a mountain. You can have full faith, right? Or you can have weak faith or strong faith or beat it faith. And I'm not, I'm, and, and again, this is not even an exhaustive list of the kinds of faith because this centurion had a different kind of faith. And I think that this is what this lesson is about faith and, and we're kind of evaluating our own faith and, and putting a spotlight on the faith and what we think is possible when we interact with our holy and righteous God. I, I think that we have to understand that the faith is the ability to, again, like that, that mustard seed faith, we can move a mountain. That's the kind of faith that we need to have sometimes. But but again, that we do not always live in that that headspace of faith. But, but this centurion, he saw all of the things that are happening. He knew about the one true and living God. And, and, and again, he embraced the one true and living God. And, 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 and he saw this Messiah, this one that he would that he had called, and he believed that he was someone special. And he believed that he came from Almighty God. And that's what we should be doing as well. When Marcel close out our lesson. Amen. And share with you that Jesus's power is unlimited, and and again, you know that he had the spot power over the over the wind and the, over the waves when he said, "Peace, be still." He had the power to cast out demons. He had the, the power to to uh to the uh to the, the uh to heal uh horrible conditions. He had the power, more power than anybody who's ever lived. His power is unlimited. And it was without borders that he could speak from here and he could go to there. They have to be like some of these fake healers. Got to lay hands on you and 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 do some gyrations in order to or swing this or do that. And that 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 that's not the kind of power Jesus had. Jesus had power without borders. And Almighty God who sits high and looks low can answer your prayers wherever you are, and that's. What I come by to tell you today that don't let the proximity of you being and have to be in a certain place for God to hear and answer your prayers. You can say your prayers to God right now where you are. It doesn't have to be here or there. You don't have to be in a church for God to hear from you. You don't have to be. You can be in your car. You can be anywhere. You can be in proximity. You can speak a word and, and, and God would intercede. You can intercede for someone in another place in another 
and, and having a certain condition and God will hear and answer your prayer. And the, the centurion will speak to that today and the centurion gave us a message that, that God's power, the power of God can move beyond and transcend time and space. And this centurion had remarkable faith and I share with you the kinds of faith that one would have I share that my list was not exhausted by any means. And our lesson today, we're studying about this centurion. I just want to know, do you have centurion faith? And I hope that you don't, you, you incorporate this kind of faith as your, as, as, as your, as your theology, as your, your understanding of, of, of God and understand of, of, of what is possible. And I hope today that you have figured out how to get centurion faith. And that is our Sunday school lesson this week. My prayer is something you've learned this week. Strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all your needs. Learn something worthy of sharing. Learn how to bolster your faith like the centurion. Believe all is possible. Jesus' power is unlimited and without borders. And if you ask, you will hear and answer your prayers. You need to have some true faith in that. That's my prayer. And my and I pray that something you've learned this week, strength of your faith, Lord, provides all your needs to learn something worthy of sharing this in the matchless name of Jesus. We pray and ask these things. Always thanks so much for your time. Amen.